And God has so many characteristics. And none of his characteristics contradict another. In fact, we said in our last class that God is consistent in his name, in his nature, in his character, and his purpose. We say that God is merciful. And we define mercy as the goodness of God towards those that are distressed. We said that God is gracious. And then the grace of God means that God is good towards those who deserve punishment. We move further to say that God is holy. God is holy. God is righteous. What is the holiness of God? When we talk about the holiness of God, we are talking about two things. Number one, God is holy because God is separate. God is not like other gods. God is in a class of his own. God is holy means that God is one. Meaning that God is integral. He is not like other gods. And again, holiness means that God is morally perfect. Praise the name of Jesus. God is morally perfect. God is morally upright. And because God is perfect, morally, he expects his children to be perfect. He wants his children to be just like him. In looking at that, I understood something. That whenever we choose not to be perfect like God, whenever we choose not to be morally sound like God, God is not happy with that. God expresses displeasure about that. He does that because he is righteous. And as a righteous being, he is not pleased when we sin. He is not happy when we sin. Another thing again I see about God in his character. We talked about that last week. We said that God is judge. Praise the name of Jesus. God is judge. There is only one lawgiver and one judge. And that lawgiver and judge is God. As a judge, we said that God has the prerogative for mercy and the prerogative for judgment. Whenever you place the two before God, whenever God is confronted with the opportunity of showing one or the other, God will go for mercy. Praise the name of Jesus. And that does not mean that God is not judging in righteousness. God judges in righteousness. He is the righteous judge. He judges in righteousness. He judges in righteousness. Showing mercy does not mean that God is not showing judgment. He has the power to either show mercy or pass judgment. And we said that God shows mercy because mercy is consistent with his mission. It is consistent with his mission. It is consistent with his mission. We said the mission of God is for us to have life and to have it more abundantly. It is not his mission to kill. It is not his mission to destroy. It is not his mission for us to continue in evil. However, his intent is for us to repent. It's for us to change our ways. It's for us to turn back to him. 
when we preached about when I or rather when I preached about the topic on the 29th of uh, December last year 29th of December last year I said something it skipped my mind let's just go back to what we are having before us today God is merciful he is merciful he is full of mercy he is full of compassion his mercy makes him to withhold punishment his mercy makes him to withhold judgment so that people will turn from their ways and come back to him I remember what I said that God is a gatherer God is not a scatterer God wants to build a family for himself a family from all the nations of the earth a family from all the tribes of the earth a family from all the languages of the earth that is why he is consistent with his name with his character with his nature and purpose now we went further to look at some of the reasons why people pray the way they pray let my enemy die by fire we went back to look at that and we came to discover that people do that for two reasons two major reasons we are able to identify two reasons behind that Number one, we said that people do that because of the idols of their minds. Because of the idols of their mind. Most times people go to the place of prayer with hurt within them. With unforgiveness within them. With anger within them. With so many emotional garbage within them. And we said that when you go to the place of prayer like that, you end up not seeing God as he is. As a matter of fact, you end up seeing God as you are. You see God with the lens of your emotional heart. You see God with the lens of the unforgiveness that is within you. While I was looking at that, I went back to the book of Ephesians. And I came to understand the reason why Paul was asking us not to allow the sun to set while we are, st while we are, still, while we are still in a position of anger. When we do that, we give the enemy a foothold. We give him a foothold. I was looking at the word foothold. <laughs> and I see so many definitions. That the word foothold means a place. When we go to the place of prayer. With anger within us. When we go to the place of prayer. With heart within us. When we go to the place of prayer. With malice within us we are automatically giving the enemy a foothold. We are giving him a place to stand. And I look at the word again. And, and the word is defined as license. License. You are giving him the opportunity. You are giving him the privilege to produce all kinds of evil desires within you and because the heart of a man is deceitful we do not understand that it is the enemy or rather the idols of our minds that are making us to say all this kind of prayers we go ahead doing that one thing I came to realize about the enemy is this you see most times the enemy will not get us to do some things 
until he is able to make us approve of them. Until he is able to make us see these things as just. Praise the name of Jesus. That is why he will make us have an erroneous understanding of the scriptures. With that, we think that these things are just. <laughs> we think that these things are acceptable. These things are pleasing in the eyes of God. Moreover, it is in the scriptures. It is stated in the scriptures that you shouldn't allow any act of wickedness to go unpunished. For that, this person must receive judgment for his wrong. This person must receive condemnation for his wrong. Praise the name of Jesus. Even if we hear that, even when we hear that, God is, you know, God, 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 God desires mercy than judgment. We are not, we are not happy about that. We want the table to be turned the other way. Just to favor the idols that are within our hearts. Just to favor the idols that are within our hearts. By the grace of God, we are going to look at genuine intercession today. Genuine prayer today. I, 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 I pick two prayers from the Old Testament. Two prayers from the Old Testament. Two prayers from Old Testament. One that was said by Moses. And another that was said by Abraham. Later on, we are going to look at the prayer of Elijah as well. It's also from the Old Testament. The prayer of Elijah, I consider, you know, you know what happened between Elijah and the prophets of Baal as, as, as a prayer. <laughs> we, are, we, we are going to look at that. And my prayer is that God will give us a good understanding of that. Before then, I looked at the word prayer. <laughs> and I came to discover that prayer is supplication for oneself and for others. Praise the name of Jesus. Prayer is supplication for oneself and for others. I got interested about the preposition for. I see for as having a positive connotation. For as having a positive meaning. Remember Matthew. Jesus speaking that we should pray for our enemies. And I, I look at it from the other way around. In fact, I looked at the antonym of for. The antonym is against. Praise the name of Jesus. So prayer is not supplication against. It's not, you know, supplication is making a humble request. For yourself and for another. That is supplication. Humble request. For yourself and for another. Praise the name of Jesus. If that is the definition of prayer, it therefore means that what you are praying for yourself in the place of prayer is what you will pray for your enemy. If we don't pray against ourselves, I don't think that it is right for us to pray against our enemies. So prayer is not praying against or yes, making supplication against your enemies. It is praying for what? For your enemies. Praying for yourself and praying for others. It mustn't be your enemy. It might just be a member of your family. It might just be your leader. It might just be your husband. It might just be your wife. 
prayer is making supplication for. It is not praying against people. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> I look at it from the other way around. You see, if you are not making a humble request, that means you are doing an arrogant what? Request. Me, I'm righteous, God. This person is not righteous. Punish him. You remember the prayer of the Pharisees and uh, the teachers of the law before Jesus against that woman that was caught in adultery. If you know that you have no, you have no sin, be the one to cast the first throw. You all went away. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Start reading from 20. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 20. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great. And their sin, their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous and the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him. What if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find charity there. Abraham said, now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned to I saw something there. You see, when God wanted to divide the heart men of Abraham and the heart men of Lot, now Lot was the first to choose a land for his sheep, for his flocks. Lord chose the greener pasture. He chose the best land. No, I was actually looking at it from two, two angles. I think Abraham would have said, good for you, Lord. Now the land that you've chosen, 
is going to be destroyed. Abraham didn't do that. Abraham was not pleased that the land was going to be what? To be destroyed. Yes, I have my own land. I have a place where my cattle are grazing. I am not pleased that that other land is going to be destroyed. Even though the guy, Lot, chose the greener pasture when there was choice before him. Looking at it from another direction again. God said he was going to give Abraham a large expanse of land. That as far as he could see from the north to the south, to the west and to the east, God was going to give that to him. When I look at Abraham again, Abraham was not, you know, saying to himself that, yes, I have this vast land. I have this vast land. I have my own blessing with me. So I don't care about what happened to my brother. Just go ahead and destroy the land. No, Abraham did not express any pleasure. Seeing that his brother was not going to have what he was having. He was not pleased about that. He was not happy about that. Rather, he pleaded for mercy. He has got to place mercy in place of judgment. In Abraham, I saw somebody that has the heart of God. In Abraham, I saw somebody that has the heart of love. Love will always wish for others what it wishes for itself. That was what Abraham did. Let's go back to Moses. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. Then the Lord said to Moses, I start from 7. We'll go down to 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because your people, whom you brought up out of Egypt, have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them, and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. This was supposed to be a good news for Moses. I am going to bless you. I'm going to destroy all of these people. But Moses was not okay with that. Moses was not pleased with that. Rather, he went into intercession. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Oh Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and mighty hands? Hand, rather. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains? and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your first anger. Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your, serv your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all the land I promised them. And it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Moses pleaded for mercy on the life of these people. Even though God gave him a promise 
that I am going to make you great. I am going to destroy all of these people. But because Moses was having the heart of love, and he wanted for others what he wanted for himself, he stood in the place of an intercessor. He pleaded for the mercies of God. And at the end of the day, the mercies of the Lord prevailed. Elijah, scriptures made us understand that a time came in the life of the prophet that he slaughtered about how many? 450 prophets of what? Prophets of Baal. Now for Christians that pray, die by fire. They, 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 they see that as something to hold on to. To pray for the death of their enemies. Now I said something. When we started looking at, you know, the, the, the topic. That we don't see a perfect view of God. In the law. If we want to see a perfect view of God, we see it on the face of Jesus. I believe that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were like some of us Christians today. They also derive pleasure in let my enemy die by fire. Let my enemy be destroyed. Let my enemy be condemned. Luke chapter 19 or chapter 9 rather chapter 9 chapter 9 and verse 54 Luke chapter 9 and verse 54 50 look at it from 51. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely resolutely set out to Jerusalem and he sent messengers on ahead who went into Samaria, Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him. You know that the Jews and the Samaritans were arch enemies. They were enemies. If you are going from Jerusalem to Galilee, you have to go around. You have to go around Samaria. You dare not pass through Samaria. If you are coming from Galilee to Jerusalem for worship, you have to pass around Samaria. You don't pass through Samaria. <laughs> they were enemies. They didn't like each other. So the Jews considered the, Samar the Samar Samaritans as their enemies. I take 52 again. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. And they went to another village. Jesus turned and what? And rebuked them. I was looking at the footnote there. And I saw something there. I think they wanted to do that. Because they thought that God had approved of what Elijah did. So, so because of that, they have an example. They want to continue with that. But Jesus said something to them. <laughs> okay, let's, okay, you don't have the footnote. I have the footnote here, 54. For some manuscripts. 
said, when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? Now, there's an addition in some manuscripts. Even as Elijah did. So, they were copying from what? From Elijah. They want to do like Elijah. Let's look at what Jesus said to them. And he said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. He has a mission. And he does everything in line with his mission. When we ask for the death of our enemies by fire, in the place of prayer, we are proving to the world that his spirit is not the spirit that is pushing us into that. Because his spirit pushes us into doing his mission. His spirit, you know, prompts us into doing his will. And what is his will? His will is to save life. His will is not for lives to be condemned. His will is for lives to repent from their evil. In order for them to obtain the life that he has come to give. Let's still look at some of the prayers that we have in the New Testament. Acts chapter 4 from verse 23 to 31. Acts chapter 4 from verse 23 to 31. This was when they threatened, they threatened, you know, the disciples not to speak in the name of Jesus. Let's look at what they did after the threat. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayers to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? In vain, the kings of the earth take their stand and their rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen now lord consider their threats and enable your servant to speak your word with great boldness stretching stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus I saw men of focus in that. They have a mission. Their desire is to continue with their mission. They saw the threat as a distraction. They didn't go to God and began to pray, die by fire. Let our enemies die by fire. No, they didn't do that. God, you have given us a duty. God, you have given us a mission. We want to carry out this mission. But somebody is restricting us from doing that. <laughs> we are presenting this before you. Enable us to speak for your word with boldness. That was what they asked for. The opportunity to continue with the mission that was given to them. Praise the name of Jesus. In response to that, God gave them boldness. God showed mercy. 
to the people that stood as a threat to them. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. The people continued in their evil. Their continuous in evil was not something that God was pleased with. It was an opportunity for them to repent. They didn't repent. They continued in their evil. Even in the face of mercy. But time came for them to receive what was due. And then that in 70 AD, destruction came upon them. Opportunity was given to them to change. To do what is right. They could not. They continued in their evil. Now I came to discover something about people continuing, you know, you know, continuing in their evil ways. See, anytime a man is found in doing wrong and he continues in it, what that individual is doing is that the individual is testing God. Praise the name of Jesus. The individual is what? Is testing God. Is making vain the long suffering of God. The individual is tempting God. Should one continue in his evil ways? Of course, there is going to be a time for judgment. You see, if, 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 if the time for judgment does not come, I think that God is not just to the righteous. Because whenever the time for judgment comes, this is what happens. Reward comes for the righteous. And then judgment comes for the wicked. If they choose not to repent, if they choose not to change their ways, in our last class I said to them that judges do not give people righteousness. They do not give people wickedness. It is what a man sows that he reaps. If you go to the courts today, and the judge passes judgment on you as a righteous person. He is not giving you any righteousness. He is rewarding you for your righteousness. If the judge passes judgment on you, the judge should not be held responsible for that. The judge should not be considered wicked for that. The judge is just giving you your due. For God, before any judgment, there is mercy, an opportunity for you to change, an opportunity for you to repent, an opportunity for you not to continue in the evil that you've given yourself to. We look at the prayer of Stephen in the New Testament. Let's look at it also. Acts chapter 7 verse 54 Acts chapter 7 verse 54 This was a man in the face of persecution People were stoning him to death Let's look at his prayer for those people 54 to 60 When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him drag him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witness laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed. Stephen prayed. While they were committing the act of wickedness against him, 
Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Do not hold this sin against them. It is true, they are my enemies. It is true that they do not want anything good for me. Lord, do not hold this against them. Stephen understood that they were ignorant. He understood that they were blind. They were blinded by the law. They thought they were doing God's service. He said, God, do not count this against them. Genuine intercession flows from the heart of love. It flows from the heart of love. It flows from the heart of love. It flows from the heart of love. I wrote something here and I want to read it for us. God's standard is very clear in scriptures. The idols in our minds are the enemies. The disease in our minds. We can only conquer and be healed from them by acting in love and forgiveness towards our enemies. We can only con conquer, conquer the enemy within us by acting in love and by forgiving our enemies. That's the only way we can find healing for ourselves. Let's look at Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. There was a time Apostle Paul prayed judgment against Elimas, the sorcerer. He prayed judgment against Elimas, the sorcerer. But I tried to look at other prayers of Paul. I didn't see him repeat that. Now I try to reconcile that with his disposition of mind in his writings, in the epistles. And I came to discover that it was time for Elimas to receive what was due for him. Praise the name of Jesus. It was time for Elimas to receive what was due for him. It was not something that Paul wished. It was not something that gave him pleasure. <laughs> because I looked at his writing from the book of Romans. <laughs> and I saw a contrast between what happened in the book of Acts. And what he's saying in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12 and verse 9. Romans 12 and verse 9. We're going to read down to 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above, above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. This is Paul speaking. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Praise the name of Jesus. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Praise the name of Jesus. Do not repay anyone what? evil for 
evil. God is against that. God is not pleased with that. The agenda of love is to push back the frontiers of evil. It is not the desire of love to see evil on increase in our world. Where love desires the punishment of evil, evil people, their love is adding to the number of evil that we have in our society. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends. God is against that. Do not take revenge, my friends. But leave room for God's wrath. Leave room for God's wrath. He is the only judge and the lawgiver. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, this is what God is asking us to do. <laughs> when people do evil against you, when people do wrong against you, just allow God to handle that. He knows how to handle that in his own way and in his own time. For us, he has given us a duty. For us, he has given us a task. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil. But overcome evil with what? With good. That is why we bless those who persecute us. That is why we pray for our enemies. In doing that, we show that we are sons of God. In doing that, we show that we are daughters of God. Let's look at John. After John got transformed. After he got transformed. Let's look at what he wrote. First John. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. I read from verse 6. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie not. We lie, rather. We lie and do not live by what? By the truth. But if we walk in light, in the light, as he is light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from what? From all sins. We can't claim that we are having fellowship with God and still be walking in darkness. We can be having fellowship with God and be desiring evil for our enemies. If we are having fellowship with God, then we will walk like him. Chapter 2 and verse 5. Chapter 2 and verse 5. First John. But if anyone obeys his word, God loves is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Not as Elijah did. Must work as what? As Jesus did. Jesus is our perfect example. Jesus is the one we are called to follow. He came to reveal God to us. We need not to see God. Seeing Jesus is seeing God. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old commandment is the message you've had. Yet I'm writing to you a new commandment. It is, its truth is seen in him and you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. 
anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in darkness. Praise the name of Jesus. Anyone who claims to be what? In the light but hates his brother he is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in darkness but does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded him. Three, eleven to fifteen. This is the message you had from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain. This was the man that wanted to call down fire on the Samaritans. But look at what he's saying here that do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. We don't belong to God. We don't belong to God. We show that we don't belong to God. We are not drinking from him as the river of life. If our prayer is the dead of the enemy, we show that we belong to the evil one. It is his mission to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. Do not be like Cain. Do not be like Cain. Do not be like Cain. We cannot go about preaching forgiveness in the name of Christ. But yet don't practice it in our relationships. A contradiction of our message. You don't go about preaching forgiveness in the name of Christ. That Christ has forgiven you of your sin. Christ is no longer counting your sin against you. But yet, I'm not having a good relationship with my brother. I don't have a message by that. We are the messages that people want to read. They may not have access to read the scriptures. But our life is there for them to see. You don't preach forgiveness in the name of Jesus and yet not have a good relationship with your brother. You are contradicting your message. You are making your light darkness. The aim of this lesson today is for us to know the disease in our hearts. It's for us to recognize the disease in our hearts. The point is that we are not doing ourselves any good. The truth is that when you allow all of these things in your mind, when you allow all of these things in your heart, you give the enemy a license to become an instrument in his hands. Because he, he, he sees your heart as, as, as a factory to produce all kinds of evil desires. We must not be ignorant of that. You see, the enemy does not always come as a roaring lion. Sometimes he comes as an angel of light. These are some of the things that we need to be cognizant about. 
the hurt in our hearts, the unforgiveness, the anger. These are the things that give the enemy a foothold. We must learn to get rid of these things. Jeremiah made us to understand that the, the heart of a man is deceitful. Most times we have all, of, have all of these things, but we don't know that we are keeping these things to our detriment. We are keeping them to our detriment. We must get rid of them. We must get rid of them. And how do we know that these things are there? We need the word of God. The amount of the word of God that you have in your inside. The amount of the word of God that you feed your soul with would help you to discern all of that. Because the word of the Lord is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent that are within man. He is a discerner. The word is not only a discerner, the word is a purifier. The word cleanses. You need the word to know that which is of the enemy that is in the inside of you. When he came to Jesus, he couldn't choose Jesus because, because he couldn't find anything of his in him. We must long for pure hearts. We must long for sincere heart. Even as we continue to fellowship with God in prayers and in the studies of the word, it's not about the other person. First deal with yourself. Deal with the issues that are within you. Stand before the word. It is when you stand before the word as a mirror that you see the way you look like. Whether you look like your father or you look like the imposter, the devil. You must desire pure and sincere heart. Even as we go to God in prayers, pure and sincere heart. That is how we find healing. That is how we find peace. Some of us do not only pray for punishment upon our enemies. We don't even know how to love ourselves. When we do any wrong against God, we, we just position our minds, you know, you know, to begin to, you know, anticipate punishment from him. Until something wrong happens to us, we are not at peace with ourselves. Praise the name of Jesus. God desires mercy. He is rich in mercy. He is rich in compassion. If you are in church and you are still going on with sin, like I mentioned earlier, you are testing God. You are tempting God. You see, most times in TFI, Students who say, is it not TFI? They preach love. You, they, they won't do anything. Is it not TFI? They preach love. They won't do anything. I gave an example. <laughs> say I'm moving towards this direction. Is it not TFI? My eyes are like this. Is it not TFI? They will not do anything. TFI is not here. You are taking yourself to what? To the place of what? Destruction. What God is doing is, no, hey, don't continue on this path. Danger, danger, danger on the path. They are still on. Moreover, I stole the biscuit. I stole the biscuit. And TV didn't see me. We had sex with one another. Nobody has seen us. We continue on the highway to destruction.
I stole the money. Nobody would know about it. I didn't buy what I requested for. Nobody would know. Is it not Professor Kent? You wouldn't even know anything about it. You are on your way to destruction. You are on your way to destruction. You need to repent and change. You need to repent. You need to change. That is not God's desire for you. There is a life that God has designed for you. God wants you to enjoy that life. So God is not happy when you continue on the path to destruction. It's like my son, stop it. I don't like it. Change from your evil ways. But you are still on it. for you to what? To change. I said something. That yes, God punishes. But most times God punishes in hope. His desire is to restore us. You get it? How many times have you beat Nathan? You are not pleased beating Nathan. You are beating Nathan. You are the one getting angry. Pa, 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 pa. You are the one getting angry. Is it Nathan or Tavala? You are not you are not happy. There was a time Peter did wrong. And Reverend Gay punished him. You could see the anger on the face of Reverend Gay. It was Peter that did wrong. Go. It was Reverend Gay that was punishing. It was Reverend Gay that was getting angry. This is not what I want for you. <laughs> This is not what I want for you. You could not heed my call. Stop it. Stop it. But you're still on it. See, when we pursue a sincere and a sincere and a pure heart, we see God as He is. We relate well with our neighbors the way God wants us to do. Let that be our goal. A sincere and a pure heart. A sincere and a pure heart. It will guide the way we pray. It will guide the way we study the scriptures. It will guide the way we relate with one another. It will project us to the world as the sons, the true sons. Brother, the, the sons of God, there is nothing like true sons and fake sons. Moses prayed from a pure heart. Abraham prayed from a pure heart. Paul is asking us to pray from a pure heart. Even John, who got transformed, is calling us to pray from a pure heart. Pray from a pure heart. Pray from a pure heart. from a pure heart. Pray from a pure heart. That is what God desires of us. That is what God expects of us. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and pray. These are things that you cannot do by your own strength. You can't do it by your own power. You need his grace. His grace is always there. His grace is always there. He's 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 always there. That God will help you to deal with all of these vestiges of carnality that are in the inside of you. Those things in you that you you, you are ignorant of. Those things that are giving the devil a foothold. That God will help you. That God will help you. That God will help you. We are created for good works, not bad works. This is what God had planned. Right from eternity. 
this is what he wants to do through us. I need your help. I cannot by my strength. I cannot by my power. I need your help. I need you. I need you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 